chemicals in fertilizers, intensive land use, and methane from livestock are just a few of the ways that farming can be damaging to the environment. But a new farming model is proving that what's good for the environment can be good for business too. I'm Russell Beard in South Wales to meet a dairy farmer who's turning his waste into a resource. How are you? What's the plan? The plan, I'm going to put some cow poo in the digester. It's cow poo in the digester, OK. Cow slurry produces methane, which is 20 times more damaging to the environment than CO2. But to Win Evans, this is a precious source of energy. Is that you? What makes your farm different to all the other farms that would just really keep this and use it as a fertilizer straight away? Tell what makes your operation different? 30 odd years ago, yeah. I decided to, I'd have a go at taking the biogas or methane out of this poo and use it as a fuel. Wynne collects the slurry in an underground reservoir beneath the milking shed. Come on, then. Let's have your scraper. All right. Follow me. Have a quick look at that. It's diluted and pumped into a holding tank, and from there into Wynne's homemade digester, where the biogas is generated. Right, now you're standing on the digester. This is the digester, is it? Yeah. OK, OK. The gas is coming up through here, uh -huh. and it's going along the the pipe and it's uh -huh. going along to um, a gas holder. The slurry in the digester is mixed to release the methane. The gas is then pumped through a tube and reaches a boiler. Some of it is combusted to heat the water tank and some is even used to fire up a cooking stove. But even the byproduct of the digester is a valuable resource to the farm. Oh man. What? Okay, what do you call this? Digestate. Digestate. You see that? So that, that's the digestive slurry, and that, that's a very good fertiliser. Wynn's organic digestate can protect soil against compaction and erosion and is high in nutrients. Yeah. It's feeding the, the, the soil to create more grass. Which feeds the cows, yeah. who make the poo. And, and, You've really closed the loop on it, and it... Yes. Uh, yeah. The other thing, on a cold day, you know, you can put your hand in it... Ah, oh, what? It's, it's nice and warm. <laughs> Wynn's energy-saving efforts don't stop here. He's equipped the farm with photovoltaic panels, which allow him to sell surplus power back to the grid, and installed a ground source heat exchange system, which uses a metal coil buried underground to extract heat from the earth. By using this combination of green resources, Wynn can generate up to 50% of the total energy the farm needs. I'm gonna hand you over to Linda now, who's, pumping, uh, who's making the cheese. Now, the cheese-making system uses a fair bit of energy. Uh, on a day like today, most of it is coming from renewables. Hello. Hi. So you're going to have to give me a hand now. So okay. you roll up the sleeves, give your arms and your hands a good scrub, because you've been out with Dad, and I know where he's been. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll get on and do the next bit now. OK. Basically, you've got a kind of loop of energy yeah. where the whey, which we've just drained away, is going straight back into the slurry digester. Yeah. That's being used to heat the water. My cheese making process. This is kind of the energy made visible again. Yes. Ten years ago, most people would have thought no one's a, an energy producer, but you are now. Potentially, you are. Although we're a dairy farm, he's like an energy farmer. Not just livestock, it's farming energy. So this part of the world is obviously very windy, and I can't help but notice you've got this fantastic looking wind turbine that's doing its job very well by the looks of it. I mean, you're, it looks like you're making energy out of thin air. <laughs> the thicker the air, the better. Yeah. <laughs> because it contains more energy. Not only farming the land, but we're farming the resources that pass over the land. If you can produce your food using the least amount of fossil fuel, it, it, it's better for everybody. And people who say to you, what do you save? It's peanuts. But um, if you've got enough peanuts, you have a sack full. There's no yeah. farming down here. What's, why have you brought me down here? 
Although I don't go in the sea much or on the sea much, it's part of my life. And I'm, I'm watching it all the time. Once we get sea level rise, we get a tremendous amount of erosion, tremendous amount of people who have to leave the, the coastal cities. That's why I'm really doing what I do. But back in 1999, our first grandchildren came along and I didn't want their grandchildren saying to them that your grandfather knew what was happening with climate change and was in a position to do something about it. I don't want them to say, well, you know, what did he do? Under order.